Hey, good evening. Welcome to another episode of Love and Black with Tori and Terry. We're so glad you tuned in tonight. Yes, I'm your host, Terry, and this is my husband. He's Tori. Welcome. We have a show for you. Uh, I'm, like, excited about tonight's show, honey. I'm, I'm thinking this is going to be good. This is family. We're home for the holidays. we got a whole theme going, you guys. So we're going to bring you some good stuff. And it's December, so I'm excited about what's to come. we got something big this month. Yeah, you know, and speaking of home for the holidays, we want to bring some of the holidays home to you guys. So we are having this theme this, this season where we are um, sharing the world with our viewers. Yeah, we're gonna be celebrating with you guys all month long. So it's exciting time. It's one of my favorite times of the year. And Christmas? Um, huh? Was that Christmas? Yeah, I love Christmas. I mean, I love Christmas. I love the lights. I love, you know, with all the festivities and our, you know, or even with our children, our grandchildren, our family. But there's another day. That's not exactly it. Another one in December? Uh oh, oh, I almost forgot. What? Is it testing to the tune of. Tomorrow will come. That one? No? What? <laughs> yeah, I think it's our anniversary, right? That's, 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 that's it is. It is our anniversary, and I can't wait to see what you got planned, too. Mm. I can't wait to see what he has planned. Well, hopefully. I mean, we're kicking <laughs> off celebration, so it should be fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I think um, for our anniversary this year, since we can't travel, I think we might have to do... <laughs> Why well, you look like that? I know, because I would, I would love to go somewhere, you guys. I'm getting cabin fever. So I think for our anniversary this year, we're going to have to take one of those new, brand new rooms we created upstairs and uh, kind of turn that into... Well, don't tell, me, don't tell me. Don't tell me. Don't tell me. You don't want to I, want, I want you to surprise me. You know I love surprises. Okay. So surprise me. So but that sounds... Like, I mean, if you got some kind of fantasy thing going with it, that'll work. Uh-oh. Speaking of fantasy... Tonight, we have an amazing duo that's starting to kick off the celebration for Home for the Holidays. It's Amina and Jesse, and they are a trap art empire. And they are gonna be with us tonight. Not only are they talented artists, entrepreneurs, and a sexy couple, they're family. They're my cousins. They're our cousins. Hey, cousins. Yeah. And hey, how you guys doing? Hey, what's up, y'all? Yeah, what's happening? Miss you guys so much. Man, is it cold there? You guys look so good. It's, cold, yeah. it's very cold here. It's cold really? It's cold here too. I'm like, can you believe it? Like I'm in Texas, I had to like get my wrap. It's cold here. Nah, something's going yeah. on with that. I'm atmosphere. loving it. Yeah. It reminds me of home. Yeah. I know, right? Love it. Hey guys, thanks for coming on tonight. We uh wanted to kind of exhibit you guys. We know that um, you know, we had a lot of fun at the last trap party here in Ooh, Houston. When you guys, you guys came here. On. Everything. So, I know, right? so uh, matter of fact, I had some people who call us up talking about, especially on my best friend. <laughs> he calls us, man, what kind of freaky stuff y'all doing these days, right? <laughs> <laughs> so I didn't really see anything freaky about it. I just remember the lady that was fun. next to us. Uh, I was about to say butt naked, but uh, she was half <laughs> naked and she was getting painted in front of us. And I was drinking my drink going. Uh, what's going on here, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, I don't even know, like, the combination of, like, Cirque du Soleil with, like, it's like an art festival, um, you know, um, supper club. Remember, like, the supper club in San Francisco, like, with the beds? I mean, it's just, it's such an experience, and I'm so glad that, we can also love the the art that it embodies because it also it's art. There's a lot of art, yeah. you know. It's it's awesome. It's yeah. it's hard to describe though, so we're gonna There's leave that to you stuff. guys. It is. It's so I fun. I mean, we experience art. We experience music. We experience. Um, I know you guys didn't have a comedian, but you had that funny person uh, up on stage that was kind of uh, like emceeing a little bit. So I, I remember that. But uh, each yeah. show has a theme too. You guys have themes, right? It's just like changes. Yes, yeah. Every show has its own little theme, so it depends what you're going to get depending on which theme it is. I love it. I love it. Too. I love it so much. So, for those of, of of our viewers that are in the Houston area or even beyond that have never experienced trap art, uh, you guys want to uh, just briefly before we go to commercial, just let a, let our audience know what is trap art. 
um, trap art, it, it, it started out as an event, but it's basically a platform for artists. So, you know, we, um, we used to, when, before COVID, uh, we would just have events. So it would be like at a, at a, some type of nightclub or a event space. Mm. And, you know, there would be like a bar and there would be a DJ. So it still would be somewhat of a party, but then we would have a lot of artists come set up their artwork and then um, maybe like a fashion show go on as well. So just oh, a lot of artists that's for the park party. Hey, Jesse, hold on one second. We're going to go to commercial, but we want to hear all about it when we come right back, okay? We'll be right back, you guys. We'll be right back to Love and Black after these messages. During the Cadillac season's best sales event, Ron Carter Cadillac, Houston's only Cadillac to your door dealer, delivers 0% APR for 72 months, plus $3,000 bonus cash on both the first ever 2020 CT4 Luxury Collection for only $449 a month, and the first ever 2020 CT5 Luxury Collection for just $499 a month, both with only $1 down. Gulf Freeway, just two minutes south of the Beltway. Shop smarter when you shop Ron Carter. Ron Carter Cadillac. I'm attorney Willie Powell's. Allow me to express myself with you. If you've been hurt or injured in a car or truck accident, give me a call and we'll get it fixed today. When it comes to protecting yourself and your partners, all the information out there can be overwhelming. Visit our website. We are a free and confidential service striving to help you stay informed and stay notified. We are committed to a healthy Houston. And now back to Love and Black with Tori and Terry. Finished watching uh, some video of tap art and man, how was that, y'all? What did you think of did that? Did you like the cities and everything that, uh, like London and all those uh, foreign places? Well, I love the fact that they're they're just global and it's not just limited. You know, I mean, this is this is fun. This is art, like we were saying. You want to take that abroad. You want to touch people with that. You want people to express themselves. Art is a form of expressing themselves. Let's bring them back and hear what they got to say. What okay. do you think? All right. Hey, Jesse, we just finished watching that clip, as you saw, uh, the ones with, uh, I think it was London, England, and uh, a couple other places. Man, I can't believe you guys get a chance to have fun doing something that you really enjoy and then getting to travel the world with it. And before we left for break, you were talking about what is trap art. So you want to finish telling our viewers that? Uh, yeah, like I said, it's, it's mainly just a platform for artists. And, um, you know, when we did the events, it was um, it was kind of a mix between a, a night out, like at a club and an art show. So we kind of mixed uh, like a night out, like a party and, a, and an art show. We mixed that together. And then, um, other than the events, we're, we're more we're just like a platform for artists. Did you guys create this, or is that something that already had been going on and you kind of perfected it? No, we created it from scratch. Oh, good. Um, <laughs> love it. I love it. I love it. It's got a sexy feel to it. So how did that? How did you? Well, I don't know. I mean, I'm, I'm wondering like how you kind of implemented that in. But how does it get the sexy flair? Because it is the it is the party. It's the nighttime party, um, and it is the art. So is that where the art and partying and just you know style of dance? I mean, how you know our? I mean, how we party? How does that come in? Is it doesn't have to do also too with the genre of music that's played? How do, how do you incorporate it? 
I think it's a combination of everything. I think that a lot of art, there are, there's a lot of art that is, you know, sexual and seductive. You know, people like to paint and draw women's bodies a lot. I feel like that's a theme in art. Um, so with a lot of our magazine covers, we had just the, the top half of a naked woman. And that was something that was, um, I feel like we became known as because we were putting that out a lot um, with the, the breast being yeah, shown yes 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 i think that was the um, wait, magazine that was the magazine okay so when we went when you guys were here oh my god so we go right and we're just like and i'm feeling it because like i said it just felt like at home to me especially just just so free and just comfortable I don't you know think what texas i mean texas was ready for it and i know yeah texas was, <laughs> but texas was just like ah, a lot of this i mean the ones that were there but i mean i you, you just kind of slid in just really comfortable we just flowed in so we're there and we see the magazine right it was that that ma that red magazine issue where she yeah. had the breasts out so we were wearing black and red red and black that night so i took a picture of tori he was holding the magazine the eyebrow up <laughs> you know like he was holding kavasi or something and so I think we posted it. We, we posted it for maybe like yeah. five minutes. And at the time, we were marriage ministry leaders. And so we're like, I don't know if we should have this. <laughs> it was before the TV and the radio yeah. show. <laughs> this was before our media, all of the media platforms. And so Tori's best friend called and was like, man, what's going on? Where y'all? <laughs> I know. He was like, where y'all? <laughs> And I could barely hear him. Because it was loud, because we were there. Yeah. I mean, he called him immediately, like, what's going on, man? Where you I know, right? He thought we were at some Caligula party or something, you know? <laughs> it was so funny. I was just like, okay. I mean, you know, it's that term, everybody can't handle your stuff. And sometimes people can't. But I'm glad that we have this episode this evening, because this is good. And I really like to show in every way that we can, using media, just as you do with your platform, you know, um, yes, we're we're men and women of God. You know, we just got ordained this year, but we're still real people, and we are relatable, and that we want to be able to reach everyone where they are, even the Caligula simply audience. where they are, and that we <laughs> embrace them, and that we welcome them, and that we love them, and that God sees them just the same. And so, it's not this Bible lashing or beating over the head. It's just simply, or even clubbing over the head. It's just simply just love to one another like we're supposed to do. And just accept people. So I, I mean, I really love that because a lot yeah. of times sexuality and all these things really become this a lot of controversy. And it doesn't have to be. It really doesn't. Yeah. So guys, who's your uh, primary target audience for trap art? Um, uh, I mean, a lot of minority like artists, like usually... I don't know a lot of them, like you know, like twenties, but but honestly, we um, we deal with artists of all age. You know, I would say the majority in the in the like twenty twenty year old, 20s, yeah, early twenty year old area. But you know, so uh, we got older artists, we got even younger artists who do different things with us, like the magazine. But but that's pretty much like I said, minority artists and just people like models, photographers. Creatives, a lot mm -hmm. of creatives. creatives. And, and that's what I was going to ask Which also. So it's not just like, you know, people drawing on canvas. You're talking about body art. You're talking about body piercing. You're talking about all forms of art, correct? Yeah, any any form of art. So that can, I mean, you could be a chef. You could be a hairstylist. You could be an entrepreneur, a clothing designer, jewelry designers. We've had literally every trade um, represented by our brand wow so uh what's your reach um we so we've been in i didn't even count <laughs> we've been in multiple u.s states um canada and the uk um we have a pretty substantial email list of people that we've collected along the way mm -hmm. um and then our instagram account has a pretty good following so we have a pretty wide reach of you know multiple thousands of people Wow. I love it. I love it. I love it. I know, right? Hey, you guys, um, I want to do rapid fire with you. Can we do some rapid fire? Yeah, let's do it. Okay. Bring so it guys, up. <laughs> okay. So you guys are a team. Okay. So normally you guys are the first, because I do it with all of our guests, and you guys are the first couple that is doing it together because everybody usually, you know, it's a solo guest and they do it on their own. So you guys have to agree on this. You ready? Okay. Here we go. Android or Apple? Apple. Apple. 
Apple. We're supposed to say it at the same time. You can, yeah, yeah. you can. Yeah, yeah, we want to see can. how it, We want to see if it lines up, too, because we'll know if it's like, <laughs> okay. oh, wait, I heard something different. Okay. <laughs> All right. Pineapple or papaya? Pineapple. Pineapple. Vanilla or swirl? Vanilla. Yeah, vanilla. <laughs> I'm just going to say He's trying to figure out what swirl is. House or hip hop? Hip hop. Sub or dom? What, Sub. This is what the, this is actually. Yeah. Um, what what uh, what is the like what you are? <laughs> yeah. 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 This is perfect. This is perfect. This is dialogue. That's what it is, cousin. So I, mean, Jesse, I didn't know she was going to say that. And I'm thinking, so, I'm thinking Subway sandwiches. Or, you, you you know, would, he would think the, the sandwich. He part. would think the sandwich. Most definitely, that's him, the sandwich. But that's not the sandwich. Well, I, I mean, talking you know, sandwiches. I don't know. Okay. okay, so this is my rapid fire. Okay, sub or dom? So, so who are I oh guess? Oh my God! Just answer no, the no, question. I don't know. We're gonna be right. He wants clarity. Are you saying? Okay. Which okay. Do you want a lifeline? You want a lifeline? Well, she said sub twice, so something's going. On. Okay, okay. So she's like. So Why you're, don't you you're, just you're the dominant one, and she's the sub. sub. For Christ's sake. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Biggie or Pac? Tupac. Uh, Okay, ghost or Tommy? Uh, uh, ghost. ghost. Okay, sun or moon? Moon. Moon. Window or aisle? Window. Window for sure. Basquiat or Warhol? Basquiat. Basquiat. Yes. Yes, Man. yes, yes. Except for that Jean dominant, Michelle, except for Basquiat. that silver dominant question, you guys are pretty spot on. With oh, they know. Other. They got it together. That's why. I mean, they're winning as one, right? <laughs> Man, I'm gonna have to brush up on some of these. I know, right? We need to. I know somebody needs to do it with us. Let's see how well we do. I think it's, I think it's really a, a measure, you know, a measurement right there. I mean, I thought she was going, going biscuits or whiskey. She's talking about Bosco or Water. Well, that's art, baby. I know, so, I know. yeah. So, Jean Michel. She got somebody Bosco. cultured over here. She know. She know I know. I'm just, I'm just making jokes. <laughs> so, what you got? So, hey, man, um, so we, of course, because we're family, we know how you guys met. Uh, you guys want to tell uh, our yeah, audience your love story? Yeah, we love a good love story. Sure, you want me to start? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. So we went to high school together, actually, um, but I was two years above him. So when we were in high school, we did not talk. Um, I don't think we spoke to each other once in high school. Right? Mm -hmm. He used to like me, though, but... Yeah. He told me that, um, but we didn't talk in high school at all. Um, hey, he was trying to play shy brother, huh? <laughs> <laughs> so we also ended up going to college together. Um, and so when we got to college, um, I had already been there for two years and then he came um, and he actually sent Where'd me a face. Where'd you go to school? Where'd you go to school? To UC Berkeley. That's right, you're right, yeah, 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 okay. So he sent me a Facebook message actually. Um, and then we kind of started hanging out a little bit in college, but it was very casual. We were just friends and we were seeing other people and we were just casual, but we were kind of like friends with benefits. Um, and so that wow. was pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, Jesse. <laughs> and so that was, it was, it was fun. It was casual. We used to talk and hang out and stuff, but it was very casual and nothing, nothing serious at all. Um, and then after college, um, we still kind of followed up with each other by Twitter. And, you know, I don't think Instagram was a thing yet, but we followed up with each other a little bit. And so I ended up going to Vegas with my parents for my grandmother's birthday. Um, so it was a real turned down Vegas trip. It was Memorial Day weekend, but I was with my mom and my stepdad and we were just like not doing anything turned up at all. Um, and so I was just chilling in the hotel, like on my phone and he had tweeted that he was coming to Vegas also, um, with a friend and it was kind of like a fluke thing. He didn't really plan it either. So he just came to Vegas and I hit him up and I was like, I'm in Vegas too. What are you doing? And then we, um, we hung out that day and night. Um, and we had a really good time. And then I left the next day and I went to Europe for, about five weeks with my mom mm -hmm. 
And during that time, you know, we started talking on Skype and all the time, like I would be in the hotel lobbies trying to find good Wi-Fi, talking to him on Skype at five o'clock in the morning because at his time it was, you know, eight hours different. And then um, we just really developed a foundation talking so much like that for five weeks. Um, and we already knew each other, mm -hmm. but it was you know, on a deeper level at that point. And at that time he was living in LA and I was living in San Francisco. And so when I came back to San Francisco, the next day I got a ticket and moved to LA and we've been together ever since. Okay, so wait, I have to, I'm over here dying, right? Because I remember when you guys met, I remember when you guys met, your mom was telling mom, she's like, Nina, you guys were, you guys were, it seemed like you were in Europe for like forever. So if it felt like forever for me, I know it felt like forever for you guys. But she was saying, right. Nina and this guy, oh, they're just so, they're crazy about one another and they can't stop talking. They talk all around the clock. <laughs> and she said too, she said, and she's moving when we get back. She's moving. I mean, you know, it was like news. My mom's like, Nina's moving. They, they, they're they really happy. And it's all long yeah. distance, and it's all long distance from Europe. <laughs> <laughs> it was really cute, though. Hey, let me ask. I was if happy you guys had excited. not have, uh, gone to Vegas, would it have been as deep? Or, Jesse, would you have pursued her anyway? Uh, I mean, Vegas, I think, was a big thing. So maybe we might not set even be here. That's a tipping point. Set it off. Vegas. It set it off. Yeah. What do you think set it off? What do you think set it off, cousin? What do you think it was for you, Jesse? Oh, um... Uh, I guess like when, when when she was in Europe, like you know, when we start talking a lot, I feel like that's when you know we start developing like a real bond and like I don't know, we kind of we knew each other from the past, and it was kind of like you know, uh, I don't know, it's like yeah, I'm com really compatible with this person, and like we we kind of know about each other's past, and um, you know, you know, kind of brought up in the same, brought up kind of the same way, so. Um, you know, I could just really relate to her. And I just feel like the time, and um, I just felt comfortable with her. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. Hey, since, uh, you know, she's a globetrotter uh, before you guys met, who's the most adventurous one of the two of you? Probably her. I don't yeah. know. I was, I was, I was I like her. he, I'm adventurous, but he's like super open. So he'll go along for the ride. You know, like it might be my idea, but he'll be down to do it. So yes. if you were like, let's just go to Mars tomorrow, he'd be like, well, what time? <laughs> <laughs> it's like I got something to do in the morning. <laughs> no, but seriously, I mean, is that is that pretty like, because that's how we are. I mean, that's kind of how we are, because we work together too. I think, I mean, thinking of that with you guys being, when you were saying you're compatible and all, because you all, your, your love story was fast, because you guys got married like four months later. He, you know, didn't you get married like four months later or something like that? No, we, we were together for two years. And then um, when he proposed to me, we got married four months after the That's proposal. What it was. That's what it was. Two years remember, yeah. our relationship. Yeah, because we got on it. Because you had, it was like, you guys got married in August. And I think we found out yeah. like May or something. It's like, okay, it's all okay. Everybody get ready. Because it was, yeah, it was a big, yeah. big shindig. Yeah, big deal. Um, and we, okay, so I don't, I, sorry, I guess I didn't realize that you guys had dated for two years. I guess so. You just always been a part of the family as far back as I can remember, Jess. You know, but yeah, I mean, you guys welcome me in. Yeah. I love it. You guys are yeah. my family. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, they are very welcoming on that side over there, huh? <laughs> yeah, yeah. They, 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 they when, when you're in and when you're out, you're out. <laughs> Man, so uh, Jesse, were you an art major or either oh, one of you yeah. art majors in school? Nah, I was a uh, African American studies. Okay, oh, I love it. But well, you, I was you, what were you, Mina? Communication. Communication. Okay. Oh, I want to talk to you about that in a minute. But Jesse, didn't you you do some art yourself, right? You just oh yeah, I just, I just started. I just started. Yeah, okay, but he's got some good stuff. We got to show you guys. I know. Stuff. I mean, do you really think good. that uh, when you sleep, he'd be like sketching you while you're asleep or something? Because <laughs> for somebody to have just started, I, I mean, he's too professional looking to have it, just he's started. He's really good. You can see the finesse. Like he's really, really good. Oh, really good. He's very, he's very <laughs> humble and modest I about it, which he's is so nice. modest. <laughs> he's so but modest. About he it. is. And you brought the pictures out. 
and we were like, he said, oh, I just scribbled just a, a little, little bit. We're like, what? I was like, yeah. what? No, you're good. You're hey, good. You talk about Warhol and uh, Basquiat. Uh, no, Basquiat. Basquiat. Yeah. Biscuit. You know? No, no. <laughs> and you, you know, you're going to, don't get us sued. Um, but anyway, yeah, no. The, I mean, like you took, you did the, um, the sketching of the kids, right? Aren't there some sketches of the kids? Yeah, we're going to show them. Yeah, yeah, they have children. Yeah. yeah, they have children that may come in and greet in and say hi to you guys while we're at this. But real quick before we commercial, Mita, you um, you said you were a communications major. Weren't you also, yes. didn't you have um, a radio show at UC Berkeley, at Cal Berkeley? I didn't have a radio show. I was, um, I interned for a radio host. Ah, what um, was that? What was that? It was cool. The show was called Sex with Emily. Oh, so it was, I've always been interested in sex and sexuality and all that kind of stuff. I actually also, um, when I was at Berkeley, I facilitated a class called Female Sexuality. Mm -hmm. And it was um, a student taught class basically where I would, I had a partner and I would teach other students, other women about their sexuality. Um, awesome. From body image to learning different things, to actual sexual acts, to sexual preferences. So all kind of fetishes, all kind of things. So that was, was that was all cool. female class. That sounds fun. It was an all female class um, because we wanted it to be a safe space for women to develop and um, learn things about themselves without men being present and being comfortable. Um, and it, the whole premise is to being comfortable, exactly. comfortable and the self care and all of that, and just loving the skin you're in, basically, and who you are. Exactly, and it was important to do that with just women so that they could feel comfortable. It's important to do, period. It's important to do, period, in life. I really yeah. believe it is, you know? Yeah, that's For a, sure. That, that must be uniquely, something that's unique on the West Coast, because <laughs> I'd have been all over these United States, and I... Uh, we only, hippies only, out here. Uh, yeah. Hippies? yeah. That's what it is? Yeah. That's a hippie, hippie, Bay Area hippie, hippie land. Like, that's, that's yeah. all that stuff. All the places still have I mean, but you're saying you are not, you know, you've been all over and you haven't heard of it, but you're not a woman either. So it wouldn't, I mean, that's like something you wouldn't know. I'm just saying. I mean, if that, if <laughs> Don't that, hate the player, hate the game. There was a class game. in college where <laughs> it, it was like, to talk about sexuality, I'm sure it would have been open to everyone. So... Unless you guys just created it on the spot. <laughs> I mean, I mean just, I'm still back at the sex talk with Emily or whatever. That's such a sweet name. You wouldn't put sex talk with the name Emily. It's just like, yeah. okay, I love it. I love it. So you know? is Emily your age or Emily older? No, she was older. She was probably in her mid thirties when I was in college. Oh, cool. um, oh she was And old she was out of San Francisco. And she did a weekly radio show um, just about different topics about sex. So my job was to help her um, come up with themes Fine. and to um, do research on the themes to give her, you know, different um, references while she was doing the show. Mm -hmm. So that was, was that really fun. fun. Was it fun? Yeah, it was really fun. I know it was. Cause it's just like, anything goes, it's just, just fun. Exactly. There's no pressure. Yeah. You can really be creative. I love that. I That's really cool. That's hey Jesse, hey, I keep saying Jesse, but hey guys, we're going to uh, go to commercial, but we're also gonna show some of your artwork, Jesse. Yes. As well as a, a couple other uh, trap art things. And we wanna uh, talk to you more about trap art when we come back. All right, we'll be right back. We'll be right back to Love in Black after these messages. Now come test drive the much anticipated all new 2021 Cadillac Escalade at Ron Carter Cadillac. And for a limited time, get an unheard of $19,000 in total savings on new 2020 Escalades or pages $879 a month with only $1 down only at Ron Carter Cadillac. Visit us today. Gulf Freeway just two minutes south of the Beltway. Visit roncartercadillac.com. Houston's only Cadillac to your door dealer. When it comes to protecting yourself and your partners, all the information out there can be overwhelming. Visit our website. We are a free and confidential service striving to help you stay informed and stay notified. We are committed to a healthy Houston. Have you been injured in an 18-wheeler accident, truck accident, car accident? Was someone texting and ran into the back of you, not paying attention? It doesn't matter what it is. Give me a call, Attorney Willie Powell. We'll fix it today. The number is 
281-881-2457. Again, that number is 281-881-2457. We'll fix it today. Call attorney Willie Powell. And now back to Love and Black with Tori and Terry. talking with our family, Jesse and Nina, and we are talking about the world of trap art, and we just showed some more video of that, and we also showed some uh, drawings of one of the creators of trap art. We got an artist in the family, y'all. Yeah. and he just literally <laughs> just picked up a pen and started doing this, so let's bring him back on. Hey, guys. Hey, guys. Yes. I'm, I'm sure people that are there will look at those sketches you drew and they're going to go, man, this dude, he's been drawing his whole life. So there's no way that it, something like that can come from a, just a beginner. So It's good. I know, right? Hey, we uh, want to get back on the trap art thing. And I want to ask you, in the age of COVID, what does trap art look like now? What are you guys doing to stay afloat with trap art, to keep it uh, you know, on everybody's mind? So basically, since we aren't able to do, which was our main, our main thing was events. Mm -hmm. So the events have come to a halt. We haven't done events for a while. Um, so we were already doing a magazine, uh, a physical magazine like you guys have. Um, but we decided to start doing a virtual magazine, basically. So it's everything is online now. Okay. Um, so we release a magazine monthly. Um, that features anywhere between you know 60 to 70 different creatives and so the creatives all have their own feature um they do a q a um that they do that we edit and add to the interview and they also submit photos so that's something that we're doing that we're submitting um we're, we're releasing monthly and that's featuring a lot of different artists and still giving artists an opportunity to to showcase themselves um okay. in addition to that the database you're able to reach all of them Yes, exactly. Okay. Exactly, what, yes. What about new so. people that watch this show? I mean, what what if they want to start participating? Yeah, so right on our website, we have signups for all of the um, all of the services that we offer. It's trapxart.com. And so you can go there and there's links to click right from the homepage. Cool. Um, where did the and X come from? Tell me where the X, because I was asked about that the other day. X is silent <laughs> in the trap art, but right, like, yeah. right, right. You know what? People people think it's because it was like something like sexual or something, but it really wasn't. It was just that when we were creating um, Instagram. the Instagram, there wasn't we couldn't do trap art. There was so already there was already there was, there was an artist named Trap Art somewhere uh, out there, I think. Um, and so we just couldn't we couldn't do it. So we just added the X because it was kind of like trap times art and. That was way it. to break it up. It way rocks. to break it up. <laughs> it rocks. It was so <laughs> yeah. perfect. It's so perfect in so many ways. That was awesome. It was. Very, it very was. creative. Really Thank was. you. Wow. I got so it. Huh, oh, I was just going to say, in addition to the, um, in the magazine, we also have a couple other things that we're doing during COVID um, for artists. So we have, we've been doing really well with the um, interviews on Instagram Live. So we have two um, two really great staff members, Jonna and Sonia, that um, do a wonderful job of researching the artists that apply to be interviewed. Mm -hmm. And then they do anywhere between a 20 minute, so some of the interviews have lasted over an hour oh, um, wow. on our Instagram Live, and that gives the artists an opportunity to tell their story, get their work out there, and then people can view it from our platform. Um, so those are the two services that have really been working for us during COVID, but we're, always thinking of new things because we don't know when this is going to be over so we're always thinking of new things um so we probably will have some additional things coming up soon as well 
Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's why I asked. So I'm glad you expounded on that because, uh, I mean, for something of that magnitude to just go belly up or just silent, wow. You know, so I'm glad you guys are still keeping up with different things to keep your audience in, engaged. Yeah, you guys are set apart. You got the magic touch. Don't yeah. worry about it at all. Melanin magic. Hey, I got a question. Okay, so let me ask you this. What is the most, and you guys can each take this, what is the most badass quote from a real person that you can recall, that you that you know of, that you think is the most badass quote? It can be okay, I have it doesn't have to be a celebrity. It doesn't have to be a celebrity. It's just anybody. You could be like, when you said Terry back in, I mean, anything. <laughs> wow. Is that a, was that a plug no, to use her? No, it's not a plug to use her. No, I don't think I'm the one that they said the most badass quote. I don't know. You guys know a lot of um, people. And I know you know so, a lot of people that are very, very smart. You know a lot of smart people. I'll put it that way. Very intelligent people, creative people. Well, the one that comes to mind actually is from a celebrity, but it just resonated with me because it was it was pretty cool. It was from Cardi B. Cardi B, what, um, what did Cardi B say? She said, you know, I don't I, I'm it's probably not verbatim. I'm gonna put it in my own words, but she basically said you know, I don't care if someone doesn't like me because half of these B words don't even like themselves. Mm. So, okay, I just feel like- Say it fully so we can get the full effect. <laughs> you can, this is television, girl, you can say it. This is our show, say it. Give it to me. I want to feel it. She just, say it. She basically said, you know, I'm not tripping off, you know, people not liking me. Half of these bitches don't even like themselves. And I feel like it's not even about like, oh, you know, people are haters or getting into that whole rabbit hole. But I think it's just a thing where a lot of times, especially in the day of social media now with everybody posting their lives and posting everything, a lot of it is a smoke screen. A lot of it's not real. And a lot of it causes people to be insecure mm -hmm. based on like you know, what they think they don't have compared to other people. Mm -hmm. And I think with her saying that, it's, it's important to realize that it's like all these people that you're comparing yourself to or that may be criticizing you probably don't even have it all together themselves. Exactly. So, she hit it out of the park. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So don't take all of that to heart. Don't let that get out of your head and just be you, do you. And um, I feel like that's a really important thing to remember because it's easy to, to look at stuff, to scroll down your phone and look at stuff and feel less than. And I think a lot of people are having trouble with that. And um, you know what? Not, and that's really important. I guess also to tag on what, what Cardi B said, uh, in my thoughts, it's like these people that are talking about you, that, are, that always have something to say, they don't even know you. So they just, right. they just are, and they're irrelevant and they're just trying to make themselves relevant by just having something to say. Like somebody's going to go, ooh, you know. You know, I, I honestly, like, I feel what you're saying, Mina, because, you know, I had primp for many years and taught it in school, and that was what I taught girls. That's just what I taught them. You know, you the best that you got. You know, know who you are, your worth and everything else. And, I mean, I've lived by that. I think you have to really, really live unapologetically. You really do, because everybody's going to have something to say about something. You cannot please everybody. And if you get caught up in that, like you said, that's a rabbit hole itself. And it's like, as long as you're good with you, that's what matters. That's what matters. So get good with yourself. Yeah. So yeah, that's that's bomb. What about you, Jesse? Any badass quotes that you you hold on to that Man, you tell I, us about? I don't know if I'm a badass, but um, I just got a there's a there's just a quote that stuck to my mind. Uh, uh, was a quote, and this guy said um, the key to, I think he said like a long. He was like a 90 year old guy or something. He's it. like, a, but he said the key to a long happy life is to have uh, low low expectations. Mm -hmm. And I don't know, that just stuck with me because, you know, um, I mean, I don't think he's saying like, you know, don't, don't, don't try to, don't strive to do good things or whatever. Don't, don't, don't be positive or whatever. But I think it's just kind of like, you know, sometimes when you, you know, you, you looking too far in the future to, and you think about, you know, oh, I want to be at this place and this place, it's like, you know, it might not work out that way. And then, you know, I just feel like to be content is, is what it's all about. So um, in the here and you know, now, I, in the here and now and enjoying the journey, enjoy exactly. the journey. Don't get too far ahead of yourself. That's right. Because, I mean, not each day is promise. So don't get so caught exactly. up in that. And that's true. That's true, cousin, because a lot of people get so focused. I mean, I know we're focused. We have goals and it's good to have goals and a vision, but don't get so 
focused on what that is or, you know, this particular yeah. goal that you're not enjoying the moments yeah. as well as you're so fixed on that. You were so fixed on that that you don't even open your mind to what other things that could possibly be. It's like, it's good. what's exactly. going to be is going to be, you know? So, yeah. Yeah, exactly. yeah um, actually, I, um, because my mind is so, if people here knew what we knew about trap arts, uh, you know, and things like that, they'll see how my mind is turning right now. And uh, it was just something we were talking uh, the other day about some things, uh, you know, what we're going to do with you guys on the show here. And, I mean, I kept thinking sex, 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 right? <laughs> and uh, <laughs> Which is kind of awkward since you guys well, are family. I mean, what are we going to do with that? <laughs> we have sex, sex, sex. <laughs> but I'm just saying, you know, just, just from what we saw, uh, you know, at, at Trap, right? Not that it was about sex, but it was about expressing that sexuality and, and things like that in the form of art. And so one of the questions I had, because we were talking about uh, polyamorous and, and things like that, what does, to, in your opinions, what does uh, cheating look like in an open relationship? Oh, that's a good question. Let's tell the viewers what, what we think it is. Like in an open relationship? Yeah. So how would you define cheating in an open relationship? What do you think that that, there's so many I think, variations now. Well, I think, I think that in my impression of open relationships that there's probably some sort of um, boundary set ahead of time with both partners. So I feel like whatever those boundaries are, if those boundaries are crossed um, or if somebody's doing something in secrecy that they're not open with their partner about, mm -hmm. to me that would be cheating, you know? Exactly. So if it's not something that you agreed upon um, that you're doing outside of what you agreed on, basically. Yeah, and, well and this put. of course, but it actually came up. Well put. And uh, we get all, fact, we get everything. You yeah, but we were all. actually talking about it yesterday. It actually came up, and I was like, okay, then open relationship, they're cheating anyway. But uh, I started to look into it, and I, I didn't even know there was an OPP rule, you know? <laughs> so I can't say it on TV, but... Other people's property. Mm. OPP, other people's... Yeah, that nah. part. Right. Dot, 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 dot. dot. It, it, right. one, one blank per person. Okay, yeah, whatever. <laughs> they get it. But anyway, uh, I mean, so this is all kind of stuff. So I thought that... Uh, and not saying that you guys are in that world, but just from you know what we saw at the show and everything with women just openly exposed and things <laughs> well, like that. Well, and it's that. not just the show. Like, this is something that, this is what's happening now. You know what I mean? Like, this is exactly what's happening now. Mm -hmm. I mean, that was one of the questions we had, too, is like, what does sexual, sex and sexuality look like in millennial couples as it weighs on your business? I mean, that was the question we had. I mean, as it weighs on your business and just the wave of the future of what sexuality is, what are you thinking? I mean, as we go forward, what do you think this is? What it's what this is going to be? Um, I think I think um, our generation. I mean, I think they was open to it in previous generation, but now I just think it's um it's just more accessible because like you got um like like back in the day, I feel like to to get into like porn or something was like a was like oh that's an industry now. There's this thing called OnlyFans, and I feel like people. People are uh, anybody can be a porn star. Yeah, anybody. From your anybody home can with, be. A, wait, what's it called? Omi. Uh, OnlyFans. OnlyFans. So oh, it's like I, okay, I really feel old. <laughs> OnlyFans. Only it's like a bit. If you could just Google it after, it's like a. I mean, it's like everybody has. Not everybody. Yeah, but a we, lot don't, of, we don't have. Yeah, one. we don't have it. So like, <laughs> you know, a lot of people have. Um, Accounts. It's kind of like a social media. It's kind of like an oh, Instagram. Wow. Okay, so it's like an Instagram. It's a social media account. Okay, okay, yeah. got it, got it. But but they post like uh, they post like content, whatever type of whatever so you could okay. think. Okay, okay, got it, got it. But yeah. it's like everybody, um, it's just a, it's just widespread. It's just really widespread, and it's not just like it's not just like oh, it's just like a porn industry. It's like literally every like random people go like, oh I. This person got OnlyFans. This person got OnlyFans. I think like celebrities are starting to do it. Like Chris Brown got an I heard he got an OnlyFans. So yeah. What? Do they get paid for that? Yeah, yeah. you get paid for it's it. It's like a so it's like a subscription based thing. So basically, so for example, we actually we do a couple of interviews also. So on Trap Art, so we interviewed a couple two weeks ago that has an OnlyFans, and so basically they have sex 
on camera I and they posted it. I caught that interview. They were very, very interesting. Yeah. Cute couple too. Right? Yeah. And so they post the content on their OnlyFans. And if somebody, they people pay a monthly subscription to be able to access whatever they post. And they post little snippets on Twitter for free for you to see what you would be paying mm -hmm. for. And so if you go to their Twitter, you're like, okay, wow, this is, this is real life right now. They are, right. we are seeing all of the anatomy. They are having sex. <laughs> you know, this is happening. Right, right, right. So what's the difference so, so, than going to one of those sites that, and saying that? What's the difference? Yeah, I mean, yeah, the they difference? were talking about, like, they were saying that because like usually the, you know, the porn industry has a pretty misogynistic feel to it. Usually it's usually very like, you know, men like dominating women in a pretty crazy way. And just like, you know, it's just not very women friendly. Mm. Porn <laughs> is Additionally, um, and so with them, they were saying that, you know, through their openness and their sexuality, they were showing that, you know, sex is something that everybody does. And um, they wanted to show that it can be done healthily. You know, it's healthy, it's normal to do this. Um, so we're putting it out there. So, so a lot of couples are doing that. Um, a lot of couples are. Cu people, yeah, yeah people, people, sometimes people do it on their own. People have like um, just cams of just themselves doing stuff. Um, but I think just in general, this generation is just really open to a lot of things. Um, and because we have social media and all these different platforms, you can put it out there, you can post it, you know? So like right. Jesse was saying, people have probably already been doing a bunch of stuff. Like people have probably been making home movies for a long time, I'm sure. but now, now they can put them up and get paid for them. Right. So I think a lot of people, especially during COVID, I think people are monetizing their sexuality a little bit more. That's, that's interesting. Um, Everybody is a star. Different. Yeah, I know, right? Hey, look, guys, we got enough time for one more question. But uh, before we ask that question, hey, um, tell us how can people reach you again, and what are your social media handles? Sure. So our Instagram is Trap X Art. That's T R A P X A R T. That's for Twitter and Instagram and Facebook. Um, and then our website is just trapxart.com. And for anyone who wants to sign up to showcase um, anything in our magazine or be interviewed on our Instagram, their signups are available there. We can also just be reached by DM also. Cool. I love it. I got one more question, and this is for you, Nina. This is us, baby. Okay. So little Brody from New York City flew into Houston and told me that you're a big fan of Sex in the City. So oh, with yes. the rapid fire feel, with the rapid fire feel, give me your final. Is it Charlotte, Miranda, Carrie, or Samantha? Carrie, all day. Carrie, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> what about you? Are you Carrie also? I, you know what? I was actually, I was talking about it with our assistant last night, and we were really going over this because she's a Sex in the City fan too. Shout out to my girl. And, um... We were talking about it last night, and I was like, well, I guess I'm Charlotte. And she was like, actually, you're kind of Miranda. Because when you date, she's like, when you <laughs> date it, she said, no. But she said, when, you know, but think about Miranda as far as dating and being like, okay, this isn't working. I'm out. Just very right. not taking any mess at all, at all. And so I was like, okay, wait a minute. And she was like, you got a little bit of Miranda. And so, but just knowing what she wants boss babe right. you know so i was like okay i'll take i'll take some little over right <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah no they yeah. i mean they all, have, they all had really dope attributes i feel like all the characters yeah they did were they so did. different but they all had things about them that yeah. you could probably identify yeah. with yeah so yeah so that's well, it. That's it. We're, that's for that was it for tonight. I'm really glad that you guys joined us. Thank I really want to. So I think we yeah. should do something together very, very soon. We can start talking about that behind the scenes. But our theme Definitely. for this month is home for the holidays, and I'm so glad this is the closest I can get. I can't touch you guys, but I can blow you kisses. I miss you, and I'm tearing up. Love you guys. I love you guys. Love you too. Thanks I for having us on. All right. Thank you. Right. Bye bye. See you soon. Happy holidays. Yeah. Thanks. Hey, so right. we, uh, before we get out of here, we want to announce our Gracie's winner for the week. And um, so we want to thank you guys for, uh, for uh, being sponsors, as well as our other sponsors, Blackwood Houston and also A Unique Heart. So uh, with Gracie's, our winner this week is, are you crying? I am, but I'm a crybaby. Somebody and get I this girl tissue, family. please. I do. 
Anyway, uh, our winner for our Gracie's uh, coupon today is Jesse Butler. So, oh, Jesse I know, Jesse's like, what? Really? <laughs> like, Jesse Prince, just a quinky dink on the first name, though. Know? But uh, <laughs> Jesse Butler, he's our, uh, our Gracie's winner today. And remember, guys, if you guys want to win uh, a Gracie's gift card, all you have to do is go to our email address at loveinblack, the number one, at gmail.com. All you have to do is let us know why you love Love in Black. And also, um, we are also wanting some new materials for next year, 2021, since we're getting out of COVID here. And um, hopefully with Biden coming in, this is, this is going to eradicate COVID, right? Yeah, but well, anyway. we're, you know what, but we're moving forward. <laughs> we're moving forward no matter what. And yeah, so are we you are. guys. We, we just, as family, we're moving forward. We're pressing forward. Yeah. Are the kids, did they come in? Nobody's, they're not awake yet. We have Mecca. Oh, Mecca. Can I say hi to Mecca? Hey, hi, Mecca. Mecca. Hi, honey. Oh, she's she's camera okay. shy. I know, right? You're getting the frame. We, we have 30 All seconds. Right. Just want to tell you we love you. Again, this is our home for the holidays. This is our family from our family to yours. We are wishing you happy holidays, and we're excited for what we're going to bring yes. you next. Don't, I mean, just stay tuned in. Just yep. stay tuned in. Don't. Don't um, don't go away. Keep close to us. We're going to be bringing you good feels and warm feelings for the holidays every Friday night at 9 o'clock here on A-Star TV. We and love you. And remember, if you guys have any contributions that you want to contribute to the show and as far as the uh, type of shows that you want to see, email us also at loveandblack1 at gmail.com as well. Hey, we had a good show today. We did. Thank you, family, for being part of this. Thank you. We love all you guys, and we'll see you next week. Love you with the love of Christ. Make love, not war. Bye. <laughs>